Now that we've learned how to describe the motion of objects in one and two dimensions, how do we get objects to move in the first place? The most basic answer to how objects move is through what's known as forces, or pushes and pulls on objects. The units of force are known as newtons. In addition, forces are vector quantities, meaning they have a magnitude and a direction to them. This means that forces can be broken down into different components using simple trigonometry, and adding forces together must be done through vector addition, or making sure to consider the directions. Finally, forces will always be applied onto an object by another object. While most of us have seen the power of the force from Star Wars, forces in our yoda list world actually have many different types and equations. Before diving into how these forces move objects or studying what's known as dynamics, let's take a look at a few of the most common types of forces and their corresponding equations. The first and most basic type of force you'll encounter is the applied force, or any force that is normally applied by a human or animal. This could be a pull, a lift, a kick, a punch, or a press, but the criteria is really quite general and all-encompassing. Because this force is applied by another person or animal, there is no associated equation for this force, as the value will be given to you in the problem or will be what you're trying to solve for. Another common force that you'll find associated with any object is the gravitational force, denoted F sub G, applied by the Earth onto the object. Essentially, this is the force of gravity that pulls us towards Earth, and has a value of the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration on the Earth's surface, or 9.8 meters per second squared. Often related to this force is what's known as the normal force, which is exclusively applied by different surfaces like floors, walls, or ceilings, or ramps. This force essentially supports objects and acts to cancel out forces like applied or gravitational forces and is called normal because its direction is always normal or perpendicular to the surface that applies it. When it comes to questions involving strings or pulleys, the most important force to remember is the force of tension, applied by a rope or string on the object. While this force is variable and doesn't have a corresponding equation, some important properties of tension are that it always acts in the same direction as the string applying it, and the tension along any single piece of string or rope must be constant. Another type of stretching and compressing force is the spring force, given by Hooke's law, which states that the force has a magnitude of the displacement from equilibrium times a quantity known as the spring constant, in a direction opposite of the displacement. Finally, one of the more complicated forces is friction. Friction, like our background knowledge would tell us, is the sort of rubbing resistance against surfaces objects feel, and always acts parallel to the surface in the direction opposite of the object's velocity or direction of motion. The equation for this force is the normal force from before times a quantity known as a coefficient of friction, denoted mu. This coefficient has two types, static and kinetic, where the static coefficient is usually larger than kinetic. Use a static form when the object is static or not moving, while the kinetic coefficient is used in situations when the object is already moving with some non-zero velocity. Putting these forces together will give you the diagrams and equations to solve for an object's motion. With tools like free body diagrams and Newton's laws, you'll soon be able to describe an object's motion solely through the forces acting on it, but that'll be the topic of the next video. For now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning the basic properties of forces and the different types as well.